The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Broadcasting live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage in Salem, New Hampshire, USA. And broadcasting around the world, this is the Cigar Authority. Transmitting since 2010, the Cigar Authority is the longest-lasting cigar podcast ever. Grab a cigar and light them up, light them up, light them up. This is the Cigar Authority. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! (laughs) Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday. December 25th, 2021. You know, Dave, you could go out and make some money with that, <laughs> <I> Bell. <guess. laughs> Absolutely. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's been uh, 12 years of the Cigar Authority, and only two times in the past this has happened. Today, we're going to talk about the top-rated cigars in the Cigar Authority history, and it's Christmas. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you are listening to the very special Christmas edition of the Cigar yes. Authority. <laughs> now in its 12th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And you catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. Now, Barry looks very special with his hat. He does. <laughs> Bouncing around there. I got the Christmas sweater. It's yeah. not the ugly one. It's the good looking one. Well, is that what you're calling it? Yeah. Okay. I, you wearing a shirt underneath that sweater? I got a t-shirt. All right. It's acceptable. I, I had to rearrange the camera to, to catch Barry's ah. ball. Yeah, my ball wouldn't fit on the screen. Wow. It's the, a big ball. The number of times I've had to uh, <laughs> ask Dave if he's wearing a shirt underneath his sweatshirt or sweater yeah. is baffling because usually the answer is no. But why well, do you have to ask yeah, him the first Because it bothers me. It just bothers me. Why? That you should or you shouldn't? You absolutely should always have a shirt on underneath your sweater or sweatshirt. Period. But what if you like the roughness of the material no. against your nipples? No. <laughs> sweatshirt? Sweatshirt and sweater. Nah. Shirt underneath. Sweatshirt? Nah. I don't know about sweatshirt. Absolutely a sweatshirt. Yeah? How about you just got to sweat into your sweatshirt. Sweatshirt is like the thick t-shirt. You yeah. need a t-shirt under your t-shirt? You do. You layer it up all the time. Well, you got to. How many you got on today? Just for the hell of it. Uh, How many layers? I got a t-shirt on, and I got my work shirt, and then a vest. Yeah, three. Don't, don't encourage him to disrobe. It really <laughs> doesn't take he much. He didn't know this was going to come up. It's no. these three layers. Sometimes four or five can be any number. <laughs> See, the t-shirt underneath an article of clothing is the fat man's corset. So it helps hold everything in. So I wear a t-shirt under everything because. It makes me look thinner. Huh. It does it. <laughs> it's very slimming. <laughs> does it? All right, uh, let's get to it. It's uh, it's Christmas, so let's have a cigar. All right, all right. Today's first cigar is the Bandolera Serie T, and it's manufactured in Costa Rica by Selected Tobacco. The size that we're lighting up is a five and a half by fifty four called the Picaros, and it features a Habano wrapper over binder and fillers that are not disclosed. It is part of the Cigar Authority care package, and a single will set you back fifteen forty nine. dollars Well, a box of 25 is three twenty eight ninety nine, which comes out to, I got the wrong price written down there, so we'll get back to you uh, <laughs> shortly on this. <laughs> Dave, not much it's on. It's like 15 bucks. Yeah. yeah. But it's fifteen forty nine is the correct All price. Right. And Did if you, you pull, buy a, a, pull a Dave and leave your, your old notes on there? Yes, but uh, a box, you'll save 15% at twoguyscigars.com. And if you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. This was in the care package. It was. Three yeah. series there are of Bandolero. Right. T, C, and A. You can easily remember Ooh. that because it's the Cigar, cigar Authority. Authority. Coincidence? I, I think not. Uh, Jonathan, which one do I like? The you blue like, one? You like the A. So A is you like blue. The, you like the T as well. Do I? Yeah. All right, good. Um, we have the no- C you're, you're less a fan of, although I think you'd smoke it if it was right. in the care package oh, yeah. and it was sent to your house. The C word but upsets I, me. I don't see you buying that one, but you bounce around a little bit. All right. Now, Dave, there's no studio audience today. There isn't. Are they all at it's home Christmas. with their they're families? Home, they're home with their families. 
And and now up. we have our dysfunctional family is, here. Yeah, it's a family, right? <laughs> kind of. So the T stands for trafficante. Trafficker. Really? So like a drug a, trafficker? Drug trafficker, but a tobacco trafficker. Ah. Just like they did in the old days with the rum runners for the bootlegging the alcohol. Oh, this yeah. This is when they were bringing the Cubans. So, Cuban yeah, between the 1600s and the 1700s, you would have unbanded cigars with undisclosed tobacco mm. coming from a country that would lose the paperwork. Yeah. And I think it was between 1770, 1717 and 1817. If I recall the, huh, the back that of sounds it. actually that sounds more correct. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, but this is a fifty-four ring gauge. Cool. They, they do have a sixty, but uh, fifty. This, but this is this is an awesome one. Very well packed. Oh, it's a God. heavy cigar. It's beautiful, beautiful. Let's give it a cut and light. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by our friends at Perdomo Cigars. Merry Christmas, Perdomos. The Perdomo brand. Uh, well, all. We're official. <laughs> Perdomo is the cigar brand. I can't break from the, the regular thing because right. I get messed up on myself. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. And excellence. happy birthday to Janine Perdomo. His birthday was yesterday, oh, nice. Christmas Eve. Happy wow. birthday to my sister, Naomi, whose birthday is today. Today, December Naomi. December 25th. All right. And happy birthday, Jesus. Do you remember when she was born and it was Christmas Day? Uh, we didn't celebrate Christmas when I was a kid, and I was three. You know, maybe so, we no. should have smoked the baby Jesus cigar today. Uh, which he calls the Atoro. Uh, Hachisos. Atabe Hachisos. I call the baby Jesus. Hachisos. It's just me, though, so nobody what else. Ha- what does Hachisos mean? God bless you. I don't know. Probably means baby Jesus. I. You may be right. You may be wrong. <laughs> you may be right. All we're right, so, John. A song about we're going gonna to light our cigar today with the Margaritaville Driftwood nothing by says, Lotus. Nothing says Christmas more than the Margaritaville. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it is 5 o'clock somewhere, and it says it right on the front of your lighter. Uh, this is a single action, meaning you press the button, and the lighter does all of the things that the lighter needs to do in order to ignite that single flame. And I know you're wondering, it says Margaritaville. Does it have the patented Vertigo big ass tank? Yes, it does. And being the whole small, lighter's tank. It's, it's amazing. Hmm. Easy adjustment wheel at the bottom, all for the low price of fourteen ninety nine. And yes, it does fit in your coin pocket. That coin? Is the Margaritaville <laughs> Driftwood by Lotus. I heard. I heard the lighter is so small. There's actually a tank that you can't see outside the lighter. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dave, do you want to know how hechizo translates? Yes. It's an adjective. It means. Homemade, locally produced, or craft? In Spanish? I'm assuming so. God, I hope so. What, homemade. I wonder It'd why be I awkward would... if it was Italian and you didn't know it. But then, Not that I speak Italian. You are Italian. You're yeah. supposed to know all the words. All the, I know the words. The but important not, words, you know, know, right? Yeah. I know the bad words. It was always the case. Although... You know, they, yeah, there's too much information around this because other people say it means a witchcraft or a spell. Which so actually kind of makes sense because his duendes is uh, the magical dwarfs. Yeah, because you know how... Really? Sp- I didn't know that either. The Spanish is, a lot of it is idiomatic, so in different countries, the same word has different connotations. What did you it's, call it's, me? It's did idiot. you just call me something? It's yeah, an idiot. Jonathan's an idiom. Ed Sullivan, you don't know about Ed Sullivan. He has a master's degree in English. Well, it's only a bachelor's degree. Bachelor's degree? Yeah, All I right. got sick of school. I got out. All right. But you, you know your English. I know some stuff. Yeah. So you wouldn't guess it, he's but also, I didn't go to college. He's, <laughs> he's proficient with the Googles. Yeah. I love the Googles. <clears throat> All right. So the first year we started the Cigar Authority, 2010, Christmas fell on a Saturday. We taped it because Christmas oh. fell on a Saturday. Jonathan wouldn't come in, or you had quit by then. I don't know what happened. Uh, by Christmas, I was back in full swing. So you had already quit. We taped it on a Thursday night. I believe we started taping at 8 o'clock. The guys locked up the shop, and we taped from 8 until 10 p.m. Really? Huh. Well, it never happened since. A Saturday has never happened for Christmas since we did that taping. It made believe like it was Christmas. And here we are. 
and I feel dishonest not to tell you the truth, so I'm going to tell you. Today, we are taping it. It not only is not Christmas, it is not even December, <laughs> <laughs> and it is not even Thanksgiving, <laughs> but it is a new edition of the Cigar Authority, and we're making believe like it's Christmas. Merry Christmas, and I hope we all live till Christmas. So the <laughs> oh, why you got to <laughs> curse it like that? God bless us, everyone. So the next time this will happen, that we'll have to fake it, will be 2027. Yeah, and it's unlikely we'll all still be alive. I yeah. heard that Barry uh, fakes it on the regular. Whoa. Yeah? Yeah. That's what I heard. <laughs> I started that rumor. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, fabulous cigar. Bandolero is in the care package. Not this specific one, but there's a Bandolero in the care package, and that uh, will be announced next week. And by next week, you mean like eight weeks from now? No, I mean next week. <laughs> yeah, I mean people get it next week, but they're not going to see this till Christmas Day, and this is the cigar in the care package. Really? This is the same cigar? Yes. Oh, all right. So, but we could tell everybody this is in the care package because they're not going to know oh. until Christmas Day. It almost sounds like a plan, so they can <laughs> smoke this on Christmas Day along yeah. with this mess. Yeah, actually, yeah. They I almost feel even, like we should start over. They haven't even <laughs> received the care package yet. Yes. No. They have. They haven't. They haven't. They haven't even been packed up yet. We've but been nobody so sees slammed. us. We're not live. No. Nothing. Nothing. So we have this information. It's the magic yeah. of TV. It. Who are you teasing? <laughs> they can't hear us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Sometimes I wonder why people enjoy the show, and other times I get a little window into so, why. So, yeah, I can't, I'm, I'm talking to them that they already have it, right? They can't hear yeah. So, Dave, here, here's a tip for you. Don't promote events that will have already happened by the time this airs. Mm, yes. Yeah, Winston Churchill's yeah. already done, so don't pull, pull that out. It? It, was it was phenomenal. It was great. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> we smoked two cigars. We had a good meal. So not what do you want for Thanksgiving, because that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want for Christmas? Uh, because we have to guess what we're going to get for Christmas. So, Barry, what did you get for Christmas? Uh, my my stepdaughter is the queen of gift giving, and every year she blows me away with something that is like, how did you even think of this? So I can't even fathom a guess of what's possibly being opened up as you listen to the show. But she's going to blow my mind. Last year she got me an autographed Mike Bossy uh, picture, a whole bunch of Islander stuff. Um, she she does it up. Now, my wife, on the other hand, world's worst gift giver. Okay. Mm. Our first Christmas together, she got me a pen. A nice pen? Yeah, she'll say it's a nice pen, but I work with computers. Like I never a Mont, write. Mont Blanc pen? I, my no, my, my girlfriend, now my wife, I think that's the first gift she got me was a... A pen? High-end pen. Or maybe it was a quill back in those <laughs> days, you know, no, just I a feather. No, I think it was a Mont Blanc. I think it was. Yeah. Way, way nice back pen. in the day, yeah. Yeah. But well, ideally, I hope somebody gets me gift certificates for clothes because everything's fitting me like a dress these days. Jonathan uh, got coal. Uh, probably, but I, I expect uh, there'll be a couple of... Uh, I'm, I'm into sweater hoodies. <laughs> it's a hoodie, like a sweatshirt, but it's a sweater. And you've got a pocket you can put yeah, your hands in to stay warm. Does, does the ex-Mrs. Jonathan get you anything, or do you get the ex-Mrs. Jonathan anything? No. The, no. No. Does the pocket allow you to access your man bits? No. Oh, what the hell right. kind of outfit do you think I'm putting together <laughs> over here, if Red they, Sullivan? If they get you the hooded sweater and they don't give you a T-shirt with it, is the gift incomplete? I have plenty no. of T-shirts. Did you ever have the pants, the... the uh, Dr. Denton's that have the... Flap in the yeah, back? Yeah, I have a pair of I didn't of have to even finish it. You go right into it. I know. I can read your mind. Easy yes. access for his boyfriend. Oh, <laughs> you have those? I have those. Yeah, footy pajamas with the open back. open back. Yeah, you ever use it? Officially use it? Uh, it, it very scary to use. Uh, I'm yes. afraid there's there's going to be problems. Of course there is. Uh, if it's I had insane. if I had to go in an outhouse and I needed to stay covered up to stay warm, I would do it. But I, I, I just take it off. Whatever. Yeah. What What if there was splatter coming out of there? Yeah, that's the problem that we're alluding to, Ed Sullivan. Yeah. We weren't trying to say it out loud. Oh, all right. Never mind that. That's insane. <laughs> the, the guy that invented No wonder why it didn't catch on, right? But of course it caught on. That's, you, you, would, you would have your undergarments, your underwear was long underwear because it would be cold out, 
and you'd take your pants down and you'd still have your long johns on and then you'd have the flap in the back to access it. Now, how is this? What's the cloak? It's on your long johns? That is yeah. the flap is on historically your speaking, going okay. back to the 1800s. That's what uh, people wore. What's the attachment method? Is it snaps? Because buttons would be awkward. Because oh, when was the last time you needed to get your, to your dick quickly, as Tony uh, <laughs> yeah. Lee would say, right? Yeah. Uh, Always. In, uh, in this case, it's Velcro. Velcro. Yeah, yeah. a girl I dated, it was uh, buttons. Really? Yeah. I think that would be very difficult to... I don't know. Yeah. It, it, was, it was fun. I think you'd be okay on your right, or in Dave's case, his left side... But when you switch yeah. to your less dominant side, you're going to shit your pants. Yeah. You know what I got, it's Dave? happening. I got nothing for Christmas. No. I like never get anything good. Really? No. You get nothing good, but you get something. Yeah, something. Yeah. I, I sort of wish we could skip it. Yeah. But everybody, you know what they say to me? You're a hard guy to buy for. Mm-hmm. I've been hearing it mm-hmm. since I was four years old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hard guy to buy for. Uh, huh. Well... I came up with a good gift for my wife. Let's see if you think this is going to work. I got a calendar, and it's got uh, pictures. Every month has a different national park on it. So she can pick whichever one she wants, and we'll go on a vacation Then you go. So she gets to pick. Yeah. Does she have to wait till that month comes up, and that's when we'll go? No, we could go any time of year, but so, she can only pick one of the months. All right, and you put a little note on there and says, yeah. pick whichever month you want. Yeah. In whichever park you want, and we're doing Wherever it. you want. I'm hoping she picks Acadia, because then I just can drive there. Okay. And uh, not on a Saturday. Cause you know not on a Saturday. I'll tell her, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta Do be you highlight the month and the day that you hope she picks and with know. arrows? I, ah. I think we got an Alaska in there. I mean, there, there's some good national parks. Oh, wow. Well, mm. if, you, if you do Alaska, you're going to miss the show. You don't, you don't yeah. shoot up to Alaska and shoot back. No, probably I mean, that's not. going to be at least seven days. Well, do you want to coach her on what she should pick? Well, I'm, you know, again, you've already given it to her because it's Christmas right, Day and she right, loved right. it. But if, if this was in the Before dance, that, then you... Yeah, well, like Jonathan says, you put a big bullseye yeah. on a certain day and she'll say, well, what's that? And, you know, it, it's yeah. Saturday... 6 p.m. We're leaving. You know. Yeah, if I was picking a romantic getaway to a national park with Ed, it would be Alaska or Hawaii. Yeah. Hawaii. Why has with parks? Ed? Well, because I'm the only one I'm, offering. Yeah, he's the most sexually attractive member of the panel. <laughs> yeah. He's got money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you're a gold digging whore. Is yeah, what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Guilty. Yeah. If <laughs> if you went with Jonathan, you'd have to go to Maine. He's not going further. You know what yeah. I like getting for Christmas? I like getting <laughs> socks. That are multicolored. You I'll know. get socks. I like getting I underwear. I'll get underwear. That fit. And the thing that I need the most in my life, disposable paintbrushes. <laughs> really? <laughs> disposable paintbrushes. I just bought a 15-pack. I'll go through them this week, which is eight what weeks ago. What happens when you paint the whole house? <laughs> well, over. it's for stain, stain with polyurethane in it. Once you use it, oh. you've got to throw it are away you, and you, you start spongy over. Spongy ones? Sponge? No, no. Oh. Spongy ones are no good. No, they don't work well. They don't work for stain at all. No. You've got to have the bristles. No. Oh. You know what's a good stocking stuffer this year? Uh, COVID at home test kits. Because everyone's trying to get those, and you just pop one of those in the stocking. What happens if it's all over by then? It's never going to be over, is it? No. no. It's never going to be over. Never. I mean, I think it'll morph over time. It'll be, that would be an awesome present, though, if it was over, just a reminder that it's over. It's so right. it works either way. I like it. I'm going to stuff some it's in the stockings. It's an expensive stocking. Is there anything you want for bucks. Christmas now? It's too late for somebody to do it because Christmas is, is today. But. I, I need a new carbon fiber fork for my bicycle. A fork? Yeah. Not the kind you eat with, the tongs that go over the wheel. Oh, yeah, in the front there. Okay. It holds the wheel. Does anybody know it? Uh, no. Uh, keep it a secret. It's a secret. Yeah. I want to see if anyone can guess. Carbon fiber fork. For yeah. You. Barry, is there something you want that you're not getting today? No. That's, that is honestly my problem. Yeah. I don't want anything. Mm. I, I mean, have everything. Another box of cigars. You know, I can get my own cigars, and I certainly mm-hmm. do. When I was younger, I wanted all the craziest, newest gadgets. Now yeah. I just, I don't care. 
I look forward to lighting up a cigar in front of the tree like I do every Christmas morning. And I'm My wife shows that. me gifts from years past still in the box that yeah. I didn't open up. <laughs> she should just rewrap Right, it. right. <laughs> like you you're gonna remember. I don't even remember it. Right. She says, huh. what do you think of that? And I said, oh, I don't know. And she says, well, you got it two years ago. You never used it. <laughs> And it sits there, so that's it. Your wife gave me a gift for Christmas one year, and I still use it, and it was a beard trimmer. Okay. That was a good present. Because you had a beard. Because uh, I have a beard. Yeah. Doesn't look like you used it recently. This is very well-shaped, Barrett's. Uh, and I think she like, would... Don't get me a beard trimmer, because I don't have a beard. Yeah. True. It was probably a hint. Your beard was probably... <laughs> Not in good shape at that time. I think probably Dave had gotten the beard trimmer for Christmas years no. prior and never opened the box. We, no, we, we don't. We don't. Um, what do you call that? Regift. Regift? No, really. We, sh- we should because I don't want what I got, so we should just regift. But we don't. We hang on to it and uh, it stays forever. We you, get a bigger house. You just keep yeah. getting a larger house. <laughs> you you don't need a Floby, right? You've got a backup. I, ha- I have there, a backup too. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, so I don't you're need good. That. The other Floby celebrating 28 years this year. <laughs> <laughs> it is the last chance to vote for the cigar of the year because next week we're going to announce it. Yes, next week is New Year's Day 2022. And again, we'll give you the truth up front. It will be taped, but just a couple of days before because we actually need your vote. Yeah. So this is it. Get get the votes in. This is the last chance for you to do that. Get them in now. Who are the contenders again? Uh, there it is up on the screen for thank you. Thank you. There. All right. You got the All Saints St. Francis, the Abuelo, the Perla del Mar Corojo, the uh, Rojas Blue Bonnets, uh, the La Gianna Angelic. And I am blind Monte as a bear. 1935 in the Bandolero Serie A Sagesius. There we go. So the seven cigars, and I'm sure this uh, is not available anymore. Uh, no. Most likely it's completely sold out. Um, we make a lot of them, but it, it is the hottest um, thing going. Uh, and very happy to hear, um, Barry told me as the show was uh, just ready to start, that a lot of people have been ordering the Contenders Pack and say, and throw in the Cigar Authority cookbook, mm-hmm. which is very nice because yep. that's a charity thing. We don't make any money from it. We not only are giving the money to charity, we're giving more yeah. than the money we make to charity. More than. We receive this much, we give this much plus that much. And you right. guys all gave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's the time of giving, right? Season of giving. Season of giving. So we're giving, and that's what we're doing because we're givers. Givers, <laughs> that's what they do. What do you think of the cigar itself? Of Bandolero as a whole, the series TCA, the Cigar Authority. That's not what it stands for, but it's coincidence. I get a little cinnamon Danish going on, but it could be because it's so early in the morning and I want breakfast. Uh, but a little cinnamon note, a little ready note, very flavorful what? cigar. Barry, you want breakfast? Yes. Have you ever put butter on a pop tart? It's so freaking good. Have you ever put butter on a pop tart? If you haven't, then I think you should. So, Yeehaw. Barry, you could either have that or. Raisin. Raisin toast. Raisin toast. Raisin. Raisin toast. Raisin toast. I got <laughs> raisins in my toast. Raisin toast. <laughs> When we were doing Grinner, I was doing this to people that were there, and they had no idea. No. These were non-Cigar Authority people. They were and non-Raisin Toast people, too. And they I, they so didn't want Raisin Toast? Some, somebody said that no, and said, oh, I'm surprised you didn't have Pop-Tarts here. Yeah. And I give him a little wink, because he's one of us. <laughs> and the guy next to me says, who eats Pop-Tarts? I said, do you ever have butter in a Pop-Tart? And he said, I don't think so. I said, it's so freaking good. <laughs> nothing, nothing. I giggled inside. And you would, too. It's those that know. Brenner. With the Cigar Won't Authority. Happen. Won't happen again. With the Cigar Authority outing, uh, we'll be able to have inside jokes with our people, and they'll get it. Yes. With, with our information there. All right, let's go to break. And when uh, we get back, uh, it's the time of the year where we're seeing top-rated cigars of the year. But Barry has been rating cigars for many years and for many years on the Cigar Authority. Uh, what is his favorites of all time? I asked him to put the list together and see what we have. And uh, they have a consensus, and it still holds true. Barry 
is the best Raider around. Let's go to the Ghost of Christmas Pass and see what the Cigar Authority has rated. We're live in the Toscano Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. To some, tradition is a catchphrase. To us, it's a guiding light. For there can be no great future without reverence for the past. Hammer and Sickle Tradition Series cigars are handmade, employing only time-honored methods. Meticulously crafted of individually selected tobaccos, Tradition Siri is a blend of three-year-aged Dominican Viso and Lijero, all finished inside a breathtaking five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. Tradition Siri from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua, the Nicaraguan expression of America's beloved brand, Reserva Real. Reserva Real Nicaragua is a Nicaraguan puro, meticulously blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. The Reserva Real Nicaragua will take Romeo lovers and Romeo novices alike on a journey through premium Nicaraguan tobaccos. Reserva Real Nicaragua. It'll steal your heart again. Surgeon General warning, tobacco use increases the risk of infertility, stillbirth, and low birth weight. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm -hmm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, Those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Christoph cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Christoph is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy. The Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar-making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. This is Nelson Afronso from Selected Tobacco, the company who made and manufactured Atabe, Byron, and Bandola. You are listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we'll have Nelson up here in the summertime sometime. He says he's coming up. It's been a long time. We're smoking the Bandolero, which says 54 on it because that's the ring gauge. It also says Series T, Traficante, because there's three series. 
T, C, and A. And this is the series T, uh, and they're all a little different within the blends. There's four sizes of each one, and this is the... Picaros. Picaros, Picaros. Hmm. I love it. Yeah. I'm a Bandolero fan, always have been. It started off, they were in these cans, and they were stackable cans. I thought they were cool as can be, as Atabay and Byron were in Jaws. And he, Nelson did switch them all up because they couldn't display properly. And it works for some reason in Cuban cigars, limited releases they put in Jaws and things mm -hmm. that he makes and produces for um, the Cuban cigar brands, um, but not so much in the U.S. market. It's, everybody wants to get one, maybe, but as an ongoing thing, it needs. We need yeah, the limited, the, the chase of a limited edition, I think, is what does it. And then when you smoke through the cigars, you have the memento of yeah. that limited edition. But regular production. It's a trophy. Yeah. You get right. a trophy, you smoke through them. It's, it's, it's on the mantle of your cigar room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we have a lot of extra jars and things from. I, I don't think so. No. They mm. all sold, and that was it. Go we on. emptied them out, and we put it aside, and they still all went. Uh, all right, so, Barry, we're talking about ratings and reviews. Everybody's putting their ratings and reviews out right now, uh, and uh, this is the time we start seeing the magazines and the bloggers, and everybody puts out Cigar of the Year, um, and then there becomes a consensus, which both you and I, all of us, we are not in the consensus because I own a cigar shop, so Barry's out. Because I'm hated. Because you're associated with me. Whatever goes on there. Um, but be that as it may, we love everyone because it's Christmas and th that's it. So screw you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when did you start rating and reviewing cigars? So my first review was with a prior owned website. And uh, it was on April 22nd, 2008. And it was under the encouragement of Sam Lucia uh, when he just started his dub days. Gave me a whole bunch of free cigars. He said, you should review them. I was like, hmm, free cigars? All I got to do is write about them? I'm in. Uh, so on April 22nd, 2008, I uh, gave a Nub Cameroon in 89. Which was his brand. Yes. Uh, and you gave it an 89. He, told you, he was encouraged you to do it. <laughs> so after, well, I think an 89 is a very good score. Yeah, but some people... Which we get, learned later on. Yeah. If it doesn't stop with After nine, he gave you that first sack tap, why would you ever give another cigar an 89? If you're, gonna, if you're not going to give it a 90, give it an 87 and like get some distance. It, it was a good cigar, but I, I went back and I read the review, and uh, I thought the novelty of it was a little weak. You know what I think? <laughs> I think... An 89 or 90 is almost a cop-out rating. Really? Both those numbers. 80, much like Jonathan says, 89, you're just not willing to go 87, you know, or something because you're going to be in for a battle. It's safe. 90, oh guy's going to shut up, but how much is he going to tout it? Maybe it's we're, not. We're running out of numbers, right? Because you can't go too low, so you've eliminated 80-plus <coughs> numbers. Right. Now you're taking away 89. And right, I, right. Uh, right. So maybe everything will be the same. It was actually. also my first ever review. There were thousands and thousands of cigars to be in the future. Yeah. So, so you need a little bit of wiggle room. First time in your life you artificially lowered a score. How many, how many do you think it was? You say thousands and thousands. Uh, I actually wrote this down because I knew you were going to ask me mm -hmm. how, many, uh, how many I did, but uh, uh, 1,700 cigars uh, in the career of my reviewing cigars. Of, I've ballparked everything. at everything with 1,350 coming at Cigar Authority. Um, mm -hmm. So if you figure the average cost of a cigar at $6, which is low to account for the freebies I've gotten over the year, I've spent just over $10,000 on cigars for review, not to mention the ones I enjoy personally. You think most of them were one and done as opposed to you got many, you re redid, redid, redid? So I always try to smoke more than one. Unless the cigar but is I guard mean, awful. To, to review and give a rating to them. Yeah, I try to smoke at least two, sometimes three. No, my question is, uh, did you review the same cigar twice? No, I, I try not to do that. All right. Uh, there were some exceptions to the rule. So at 1,700 cigars, I'd say, say at, least 15, at least 1,500, if not 1,600 uh, different. different cigars. Maybe a different size, a different brand. Yes. Everything. Uh, so how about for the Cigar Authority? Um, when did you start? Uh, so my first rating? review for Cigar Authority came on July 1st, 2014. 
and I was excited to be working in the TAA store, so I had readily access to new TAA cigars, so it was the Avo movement. And uh, Did it move you? No. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 actually, it did, because I, I gave it a 92. <coughs> um, okay. So it, it was a good cigar, but it was so happy. I was so happy at that point not to have to chase, because yeah. I used to be a chaser. I don't think I'm a chaser anymore. You might disagree, but... You're better. Up until maybe three years ago, I was still chasing everything. Yeah. You, you got better as far as your, your fanboy status. The problem is you got to know some of these people, and you realize some of them are douchebags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll agree. <laughs> and 100% th- true. Did I warn you when you started? We sat there, and I go, I'm about to ruin you as far as a cigar fanboy. I'm going to ruin you. I got ruined working in Miami because... I, I'm not going to name any names, but I, I, I saw so many manufacturers. All right, I'm now an insider bashing blogger A, bashing blogger B, and then seeing them, oh, my God, how are you? I'm yeah, so glad to fake. see you. I'm like, this is fake bullshit. So I, be, I started to become jaded yeah. in, in Miami. Yeah. And I think it's gotten worse over the years. Yeah, I've said to people that have come to try to work for me, and, they, and they're big cigar geeks, mm-hmm. and I go, you, you if you really love cigars and stuff, you probably don't want to come and work mm-hmm. because it's going to ruin you. Mm-hmm. If you're loving the hobby of it and the people and the hobby and everything, you come in, you become an insider, and you know what's going on. My favorite game, my favorite game when somebody is a cigar geek is I take something out of my humidor that's very rare, that a rep gave me years ago, whatever, it doesn't matter the brand, but I'll take that cigar and I'll go find one that looks exactly the same for a fraction of the price, take the bands off, put a paper band on them, number them one and two, number the bands I took off, one and two, smoke these at the same time. For most, in most cases, the first time that person has smoked two cigars at the same time, and almost every time they put the one that they would have chased down and finish the other one. Yeah. And then because most, most of the chased after cigars are hype. I was going through my humidor with Barry when he started. I'm giving mm-hmm. him cigars in the office. And he actually said, oh, he, I can't smoke that. He refused mm-hmm. some of them. <laughs> I, can't, Barry I can't smoke Stein. that. Uh-huh. I can't smoke that. That's you can't give that thing. to me. Yeah, and now I don't give a fuck. There I we mean, go. it's rolled leaves. It's meant to be smoked. You know? You're just thinking of it as a free cigar at this point. No, if anything... You've I, gone back to your roots, you cheap bastard. Huh. Yeah, it could be cheap at times, but... I don't know. I used to I used to save cigars. I always used to have a humidor at home that was full of thousands of cigars, uh, never wanting to smoke the last one or something. Now I get them, I smoke them. Mm-hmm. So I started a couple of years ago. I said it on the show. Next year, we were at a New Year's Eve show or whatever we were doing, mm-hmm. and I said, that's it. I'm going to start smoking cigars out of my humidor. And I did. I started mm-hmm. breaking boxes open and sharing them, and they would go through. And the humidor doesn't get any smaller. It fills up again. There's no place to put anything, and I've done it again. Huh. And I have to stop this thing of uh, hanging on. I don't know. I'm getting older. Let me yeah. just smoke them. And smoke them. Yeah. At yeah. the time, there's tape- ones that you've got to save, like, like the abuelo for baby James. You're gonna you're yeah. gonna hold on to that box. That one's important. At the time of taping this, I have six cigars in my humidor at home, and it's probably a 500 count humidor. <laughs> wow Because it's a mini cabinet Yeah And you have six cigars I have six the, cigars in it The humidor is not working well No <laughs> Yeah Not working well like that um, Okay what would you say well, What is The top three all time Highest rated cigars ever It can be The Cigar Authority It can be Both when you were A cigar smoker Or whatever So the first hundred rating I ever gave was back in June 2008 uh, and I put on it just a little note. This is my favorite cigar. If the cigar does not get a perfect cigar when it's my favorite, would it in, when, what would? In reality, the cigar would get a 94 to 96. But for me, there is none better on the market currently. So it deserves perfection for that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And it was a Padron Prince of, Prince of Pay. Interesting enough, I did review that cigar again in June 2017. And I gave it a 96. Okay. Because there was a new favorite of mine, and since TCA, I've given five 100 ratings, and they're the Atabe Brujo, Sabio Spiritus, the Byron Veneciano, and the Bandolero Sejasis. I've given all five of those brands a 100 rating, because right now, the best cigar maker out there, in my opinion, is Nelson Alfonso. Yeah. 
So five for the Cigar Authority, and every single one was by N- Nelson Alfonso. Nobody else. Nobody else. And how many with, with the former? Um, one. One. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> Which was Padron. I don't think people could make the argument. I know you hear it out there, and I'd say somebody who has never rated 100 has never found a, a perfect cigar for them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, ratings are subjective. So, I mean, my 100 doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be Jonathan or yours 100. For me, there are no better cigars on the market right now than Nelson and Alfonso's producing. But do you feel like... Five years from now, there might be another 100. Do you feel like by giving something 100 that you have now hit your ceiling and now there's pressure to give something the first 101 rating? I almost want to do that out of spite because oh, they're it, asking for it. Yeah, it, it, piss, it pisses off certain bloggers that yeah. have given a hundred rating. Why does it piss you off? Well, so that, that doesn't. Done it, does that piss them off? They're not mad at you. They're mad at themselves for not having done it first. I say I'd like it's to not believe a, that. It's, it's not just, a you thing. It's a them thing. No, it's it's definitely a me thing. I think I am the redheaded stepchild of the cigar blogging. Oh community. yeah, you're definitely that. <laughs> yeah. But it, they, them being mad at you for giving a hundred rating has nothing to do with you. That has to do with them having. I a think small I just penis. like cigars more than they do. When Jonathan had hair, he was redheaded. Did you feel like a stepchild? Oh, yeah. dude, I got my ass beat for being a redhead. I, I never my realized it life. was something, and then yeah, yeah. yet you got redheaded stepchild. And redhead was a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. The gingers have no. We're souls. still the only. We're the only group of people where it's socially acceptable to pick on us, mm-hmm. really, for having an attribute that is red hair. Yeah. Yes, people say redheaded stepchild, and you don't mm-hmm. say anything wrong with that. No. Blonde haired stepchild, fine. But if yeah. you're redheaded, oh, forget blonde. about it. It's because I, I never realized. I mean, I guess it's a woke era, so maybe we shouldn't be saying redhead. Redhead. Get, the, get out of here! <laughs> I can take it, and that's the well, thing. You about, don't have hair. Well, if I showed you my chest, I mean, it's like three inches long. And, and it's a redhead fire engine. Yeah, he's got the fire crotch. I bet. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh yeah. I don't need to hear any more of this. <laughs> By the way, without naming names, the lowest rated cigars I've ever given were a fifty-four, sixty-five, and an eighty-four. Whoa. 84. I've done it monthly. Yeah. <laughs> I do that month. We have to do Cigar Journal. Yeah. Have yeah, I've done, done it, I've done it in 82 in Cigar Journal. Uh, I think it was Cigar 1561. <laughs> I, I don't remember what it was. That means anything. Yeah. To you other reviewers out there, 1561, what a piece of shit that was. <laughs> I don't know what. Um, well, the, the thing about the Cigar Journal is the lowest number that they have on the sheet is 82. So uh, I may have given it a lower score, but they're saying to me, rate this from 82 to 100. The highest I've ever given is 96, and the lowest is 82. I did a 98 once. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember what it, it turned out? It was a Padron. Up? Yeah. It was a Padron. <coughs> huh. And I don't think any of the three brands that got those low scores exist anymore. So, So... The question I have here next, only because I wrote the questions down, is let's look at the categories. Does one country get higher ratings than the other? And we're five out of five were from Costa Rica, which means nothing. There's no Costa Rican tobacco right. in this bandolero we're smoking, nor is there an Atabay and Byron. They are rolled in Costa Rica, which, what the hell does that mean? I mean, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, but when you look at export numbers, it goes by exports of Nicaragua, Dominican. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean it's puros. Right. So if you're going to go by averages of what I reviewed, it's Costa Rica followed by Nicaragua, Honduras, and the Dominican Republic. And I actually did a as far as the countries of origin in that order for number of cigars reviewed. No, for <laughs> average review, highest rating. Oh, highest rating. Okay. And so I actually ran the numbers on the Honduran and Dominican because I, I, I've, you'll if we get to it, you'll see a, a certain Dominican brand has scored high consistently. All right, let's get to it. So let's look at Dominican. Top highest rated Dominican cigars. Uh, coming in at number three is uh, Davidoff Chef's Edition. What year? Uh, I believe it was this past year. Uh, That's a good cigar. Got 96. Never smoked it. Davidoff Year of the Rat got in 96. And my highest rated Dominican cigar was the Davidoff Master Selection 2013, which got in 98 and was mm-hmm. actually used in advertising by Davidoff. 
Okay, so all of those are limited releases because that's who you are. You, you still are a geek. <laughs> yeah, I, I still put them up there because a lot of times, you know, I, I work for twoguyscigars.com. Yeah. We're not hiding the fact. People want to know my opinion, so I'll just tell them I put up a review. Yeah. How about, uh, is, is there, you have anything there of a top-rated Dominican that is readily available that somebody could buy someday? Yeah, I only went back through the top three. Yeah. I'm sure there's some. you can't buy any of those. I'm no. sure there are some out there. <laughs> and once Here's the top three, everybody. <laughs> can't get can't, them. Can't get any of them. And once you leave the Dominican, you'll see that it becomes less and less limited edition. That's what I hated about Cigar Aficionado, rating cigars that are unavailable you cannot get it no matter mm-hmm. what and they'll put it at the top of the list and i go well what is the sense of that well there right. is there is a sense to it in the fact that you can create buzz for the next one so davidoff year of series tend to get high ratings they tend to be good cigars mm-hmm. i haven't smoked a dud no, they don't so make bad cigars. When the no year doubt. of this next year of comes, and that customer that slept on last year's and it gets a big review comes around, you say, "Yeah, you slept on it last year, Charlie. Why don't you step up?" And they step up. There is a value to it. Yeah, but, this but, this past year's uh, that, like last month, the year of the tiger came out. It blew my mind. People were buying the ten count for by the box. How come yeah. I didn't get any? You got them. They, they're being delivered today. Oh, all right. Well, or the day of yeah. the recording. They right. were delivered to you back in November. Yes. yes. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> start, start to stay with the show, will yeah. you? <laughs> All right. That's the first time I've fallen victim. Okay. So, okay, let's look but at But, yeah, once you get aside limited editions, I find uh, Dominican cigars to be pedestrian to my palate. And that's where it becomes opinion. Uh, you know, I hear from various people. I love your reviews because our palate seems to be very similar. But there are people that love other reviewers because there's similarity in palettes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, somebody can use you as a benchmark because you yes. are fairly consistent as much as I like to break your balls. You're fairly consistent. So where when I first started on the show, you and I would not have aligned mm-hmm. palette-wise. Mm-hmm. Now you and I are closer to smoking the same stuff. So when you put out a review and give something a higher rating, mm-hmm. I would give it a second look. And I feel like a lot of our core listeners are in the same boat. Do you ever look back at old review ratings where you had to in order to get this information yeah. and say, how did I give that a high rating? You know, like you're sorry you gave something a big rating or sorry you gave something a low rating? Uh, no, like compiling this list, I, I pretty much firmly believe that these are all spot on. Uh, maybe my highest rated Gordo, if I had to revisit it, it might be two points lower, but for some odd reason... Uh, I smoked two cigars that day, one in the morning, one at the end of the day. And, uh, it, you know, it might have been something that day where fired on all cylinders. But if I, when I smoked it this past week when I was combining this, I go, eh, if I was re-reviewing this, it might be one or two points lower. How about back in the day when Gordos were just starting out and you'd, you'd smoke the Gordo and you say, it's way too big, it's a 60 ring gauge, but I'm going to review and give it, give it not what it deserves because it was too big and now today it would be. Yeah, I fought reviewing them for the longest time. Uh, now a 60 ring gauge comes in, I'll, I'm, I'm not going to buy it on a consistent basis, but it's not as offensive to me as it yeah. used to be. Well, the other thing is that the blending has come such a far distance mm-hmm. on 60 ring gauges because it's a real size now. Yeah. So it used to be that manufacturers would just put bullshit filler in, just extra combustible material, so it would continue to burn. And everybody's complaint about the 60 ring gauge compared to a Toro, if you were smoking for flavor, is the 60 ring gauge tasted washed out and the Toro was a better flavor. Only the guys that were looking for a better value in quotes were going to the 60 ring gauge. Now you've got guys like Nelson putting out the Bandolero, his 60 ring gauge in the T-Series, is the best-tasting one. Why? He only has his tobacco. Right. He doesn't have bullshit filler. Well, we saw that in the um, hot cake. Correct. 60 ring gauge. It's, it's so strong. Oh, yeah. Which you'd think just quite the opposite, but they have that tobacco. That's what they use. Perdomo is another example. Right. It's not washed <clears throat> out because he only has Perdomo tobacco. He doesn't have bullshit filler. <clears throat> All right, Nicaraguan cigars, top three highest See what I did there with this train? So I put I put these in alphabetical order because he had three cigars that all rated 97. Mm. Uh, so not to pray favorites, alphabetical order. Akinor's Leaf Connecticut Toro, Nesta Miranda Special Selection Toro, and the Perdomo 10th Anniversary Epicure Maduro. All three got a 97, my highest rated Nicaraguans. 
Connecticut Sun Grown in Medora. Hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Cover them all. Yeah. Amazing that you picked the Connecticut, but Aganosa Leaf, again, uh, uh, n- not your grandfather's. Not your grandfather's Connecticut, and uh, yeah. I liked it far better than the Habano. And uh, it, it ranked high. I, I don't even think it's your father's Connecticut. It's just your Connecticut. It's yours. Yeah. yeah. It's 2021, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, okay, Honduran. Top highest rated Hondurans. Uh, so four of them tied at 97. Once again, al- uh, alphabetical order. Aladino, Corojo, Toro, and Robusto, as well as the, uh, excuse me, that's the regular Aladino, Corojo, Toro, and Robusto. The Aladino Corojo Reserva number four, and the Asylum eight eleven by eighteen, all three, all four huh. got a ninety seven. Wow, you're a high rater, <laughs> and you're going to hear this next week from every other blogger out there saying it's the yearly pick on Barry time. Yeah, right? did, did. And, and and we're talking about he averages point eight higher or whatever. It's not yeah. like it's crazy number or something. Uh, but con- but the, the the magic is it's consistently mm-hmm. so. Crow Reserve uh, the robusto didn't get <coughs> no. So the number four the first go around, the second go around to me if I, if I re reviewed it, it would probably be a ninety seven as well. But the others got ninety six ninety five. Jonathan's lobbying to up the rating on was, that. You, none of us ever sta- saved our cigar journal ratings, right? No, no. I wonder if they ever saved our cigar journal ratings. Right, to know how we all stack up against each other for, you that know, who's a hard grader. Thing. So yeah. for a while, in the beginning of this, you guys were sending me your reviews, and I was compiling the stats mm. about how close we were to the actual rating. Yeah. But when you got, when you got our, our scores and you averaged the four, was, we were all within a half a point right. of the average score. Yes. Crazy. Yeah, and I'm and, sure and that we were, hasn't changed. we were changed. all close with each other. Yeah. Despite you guys being one off all the time mm-hmm. on the strength profile mm-hmm. of a real cigar, we land it when right. it comes to flavor. Because well, I thought we put that to bed like eight weeks ago. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, every now and then, Dave, you know, after we're both done, I'll go to you before you've submitted. Yes. What did you think of this one? Yes. And we're always within a point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm always curious of the worst and the best. <laughs> And the same goes for when I look at in, in magazines, Cigar Journal magazine. I flip to the front, see what they're giving the biggest rating yeah. to, and flip to the back, see what they're giving. Stuff in between. It's in between. It's all good. But um, I, I remember I did one uh, cigar dinner, and this was when Cigar Aficionado was all the rage. There were giant-sized things when they would come in. We would sell 300 copies of Cigar right. Aficionado when it came in. <clears throat> and... Um, then they were at a stack of them, and um, across the street from our Everett store at the time, we're having a cigar dinner that night, and I get the magazine, and I flip through it, and I'm looking at all the ratings, and I get down to the very end, the last rating, which they gave a, the worst rating of all time to the cigar, and that was the cigar we were doing the cigar dinner with that night. <laughs> and I go, oh, no. So I said, all right, what am I going to do? These people that are going to a cigar dinner, of course, read the magazine because mm-hmm. it was all the rage at the time. So I brought it with me, and I, did, I gave the cigar out, talked about it and all that, and I said, what do you guys think about it? Uh, no, seriously, I want to know the truth, blah, blah, blah. And then I read the review to them, and everybody's boo, 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 boo in the review because here they mm-hmm. are smoking it, and this is what it said about it, so it was a, it was a lot. And it turned into a, a whole thing that's happening. Yeah. It was called Penamil, was the brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, Swisher owned it, and they gave it like a 60 rating or something wow. like that. It was really, really bad. And the cigar was not really, really bad. They destroyed them. Destroyed. So they stopped making what them? was the real <laughs> rating, as you remember? Was we it? didn't give a number, but the people liked the cigar. And, uh, you know, it, it gave me time to um, sell those cigars yeah. because I said they're never going to make this ever again. And they never did. It was huh. over. It was, it was over. It's over. All right. So Mexico, Costa Rica, any other countries? Let's call it all others. All right. So if the, not counting the aforementioned 100s that we... Did early in yes. the segment, and we'll smoke in the next hour. Uh, Bandolera Picaro, which we're smoking right now, and so are our listeners, got a 97. 
Byron Petit Poema got a 98, and Byron Grand Poema got a 99. Mm. All Costa Rican again. All Costa Rican. And, and, and all Nelson Alfonso. Yeah. You got anything of anybody else? That- no, I mean, I, I'm not a fan of Mexican puros, yeah. so I haven't really reviewed huh. Tiamo. You never and reviewed if, it, huh? Yeah, if I don't like a cigar, I'm not reviewing it. Yeah, so, so, so that's interesting because if you did, you ought, you'd probably balance out with the other reviewers mm-hmm. by having bad reviews. Some of them, I feel, they kind of get off on giving somebody mm-hmm. a bad review. I, I, I agree. Yeah. It, it, the, the blogger today is very different than the blogger when I started. When I started, it was a fraternity because I can't think of a female uh, cigar blogger. So it was a fraternity. You know, you had the Jerry Cruz, the Brian Hewitt, the Walt Whites, the Craig Vandeslice. Yeah. It was just a, it was a community. And, you know, some of the people are still around, David Jones down in Tennessee. It was very close knit. Now it's, there's a lot of malicious behavior within the blogger community, and that's going to piss off some people. But I, I don't care because no, I'm opinionated. It seems, it seems that I, I see some yeah. of the things and I go, well, that's not nice. You know, you just look <laughs> at it as I'm reading a review and I go, that's <laughs> not nice. There's other ways to say it or something. Remember, these, uh, these cigars are somebody's It's business. their business. This is, the, this is really their baby, right? This mm-hmm. is it. This is how they run their business. And you are going to affect by saying something mm-hmm. horrible. Mm-hmm. There's a nice way to say. Or don't say like anything it. at all like <laughs> right. we learned as kids. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, how about Cubans? you have a Ray Cubans? Yeah, I've done cu- two Cubans. I actually thought I did more. Uh, but in retrospect, I remember Gary Arsh, let him rest in peace, giving me a hard time for reviewing Cubans. And uh, I stopped reviewing them at that point. Uh, but I did the Cohiba Bahiki on my old site, which got a 90, and that was the only one I did on that site, and that's right around when Gary Ars told me, knock it off. And then I did the uh, Viveros, uh, which has Vigueros, yeah. yeah, which has artwork from Nelson Alfonso <coughs> right. on it, and that got an 83. He did both those cigars. Yeah. So, um, Bahiki, very expensive cigar. I think a great cigar, yeah. but the price... Whew, you know, does, does that have any fluctuation to you? Seventy-five dollars a guy. Yeah, I don't let price affect. No, no. If, if I did, Byron and yes, and Atabe would get dinged <clears throat> for a high price. Yeah, that's true. And that that Cohiba Bahiki, I bought it in Israel and it was one hundred ten U.S. Wow. Because they have a hundred percent tobacco tax. Oh, God. How about the highest rated sizes? The size matter. <laughs> uh, no comment. Yeah. Uh, Lancero, the highest rated was the Atabe Spirit II selection that got 100. Corona, the Aladino Corojo Reserva number no. 4, got a 97. For Corona Gorda, the Bandolero Sagesius got 100. Robusto, we went with the alphabetical order. We took the Aganorsa Leaf Connecticut, 97. For Toro, we went alphabetical order. We took the Byron Elegantes. Bellicoso slash Torpedo, we took the Byron Veneciano, which got 100. Churchill was the Davidoff Chef's Edition, the year that it was a Churchill, that got a 96. Gordo, Big Poppy Slugger, Extra Large, that got a 97. And uh, for mm. Salomon, Laura Laura, Prio Vintage 2021, got a 96. So we, it, it, nobody got hurt because of their size, apparently. No, I, I, it, no. You, you got uh, to judge the cigar for what it is. But I think... Like, if somebody... They, they're trying to get me in Nashua to smoke the new Asylum that's... What nine 90, by nine, nine by ninety, and I'm like, yeah, you buy it for me, I'll, I'll smoke it because it's not a cheap date. <laughs> but when I smoke it, I'm not going to ding it for the size because that's the size it was made in. But I'm you're smoking ding it, it that by cigar. That cigar has a cost associated with it. It has a size associated mm. with it. The size is going to dictate some of the burn patterns. It's going to dictate some of the strength. So that that's where it will get dinged on the combustion, the flavor. It, how but awkward not, it, it is in your it's mouth. Not, it's not going to start at minus 13 because it's Asylum. 90. See what uh, I did there? I, I see what you did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Barry, yeah. If that's it, assuming you're starting at 103. If it makes your jaw hurt while you're smoking it, it gets dinged for that. So on the, la- on the last thing, the last segment, you know, I do the look, I do the notes, I do the finish. In the finish, I'll make note that the size is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. But I'm not going to duck points for the size. Yeah. Those cigars are large. I haven't even seen it. Oh, you'll be horrified. Yeah. 
Yeah. They're each in their own individual wood box. Yeah. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Uh, okay, let's take a break. And when we come back, let's look at the ghosts of Christmas future. That was Christmas past. See what I'm doing here? I see what uh, you did there. <clears throat> what will be hot in 2022? It's not even here. How about 2025 and beyond? Let's look in the crystal ball. Let's look at the ghosts of Christmas future. When we come back, we're live in the Toscano Cigar Soundstage. And you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Are you a member of the Cigar Authority Care Package? Well, if not, the time, my friend, is now. For just $24.99, you'll get four premium cigars delivered to your door each month. And we'll smoke each one of those cigars on the Cigar Authority Podcast with you. I don't know if that's really a benefit. Sure it is. We will judge the construction, flavors, and review the cigars, and you can see how right or wrong we really are. You might be surprised. Four premium cigars delivered to you for $24.99, and you can quit any time, but you won't. The value is incredible. Want to take the Cigar Authority Care Package to the next level? Sign up or upgrade to the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime. For just $5 more, you get an extra cigar and usually something special. That's five cigars each month, all different. Find the Cigar Authority Care Package on thecigarauthority.com and sign up today. The Cigar Authority Care Package. Aging Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating, is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times, subtle and understated, with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General warning, cigar smoking can cause lung cancer and heart disease. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world, from exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast or better yet passionado cigar journal covers cigars in the u.s and around the world and is printed right here in the usa you owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine cigar journal available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website cigarjournal.com that's cigar journal Com. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th Anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th Anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Justo and his father Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa Tobacco Farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. 
and a Ladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba. And after one light, this old school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. Sono Michael Cappellini dal Toscano Cigars e stai ascoltando al Cigar Authority sul United Podcast Network. Benvenuti a tutti voi. We're back for the Christmas episode and we already looked at the Christmas past but now it's time to look at the future of the Christmas future. Welcome back everybody. Merry Christmas if you're home and you're watching the Cigar Authority. Uh, you've had enough of the food, you've had enough of the family, you've had enough of everything, and you said, let me just sit down and have a cigar. And, uh, At noon on Christmas. Well, they might not be watching live, they're watching Christmas later on, or new to Christmas. Whatever it is, Merry Christmas. I uh, hope you're having a nice day, either, e either way. So, Barry, I said, uh, let's go to uh, um, one so of Barry's favorites for there. So you have compiled the cigars, or the cigar we're going to have for um, our next cigar. I yeah. hate to put this one down. I think I, I got a little nub left. I'm going to save it, though, because I like it so much. So we, uh, we're going to do this the style of Christmas, uh, what was it? What is it, Chris Kringle or something like that? Chris Kringle. Yeah, you know, where you, uh, you... The Yankee swap. Yankee swap, thank you. Okay. So we uh, randomly put the people in the number generator before the show, and uh, I go first. So I'm going <laughs> to... I, I'm gonna I grab. See this generator. <laughs> no, no. I'm gonna grab a cigar. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking the Byron Veneciano. The next number pulled was Jonathan. You just reached in and grabbed yeah, that. So you're gonna reach in and you're gonna grab a cigar. As it turns out, Dave, you're better to have the last <laughs> Don't number. Don't be feeling around. Right. So now you get to keep the Atabe Brujos or trade it for the Byron Veneciano. I'm gonna trade. Huh. The next person on the list was Dave. So, uh, Jonathan, if you could uh, let him reach oh, boy. in. <laughs> I feel something in there. <laughs> you did that on purpose. I'll take this one. So, Dave wound up with the Atabe Sabio. So, you're going to keep it or trade it? I love this cigar. Yeah. What do you have? I have the Brujos. It's a little thicker, but it's a little shorter. I'll keep, I'll keep what I have. And the last cigar in the thing was the Atabe oh, Spiritus. So I could give that to whomever I yep. want, right? Yes. And what is that, a Lancera? That's, that's a Lancera. That's a Lancera. Who loves Lanceros? <laughs> <laughs> you do. Oh, hey, <laughs> you do. You love Lanceros. Oh. Dave, only because it's Christmas Day. I'm going to keep this Beautiful, one. <laughs> beautiful. I think we're I all, are we all happy? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, who's going to complain about a 100-rated cigar, I, right? I don't want you to have to who's go. Gonna, who's going to hang, who's going to complain about $100 worth of cigars <laughs> being, being lit right now? Easy, right? Easily. Yeah, I, I didn't want you to have to go Maduro on Christmas Day. Oh, that would have been such a such a play, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just the spite Lancero trade. <laughs> you know, everybody watching right now is going, oh, that no balls bastard. I, I do not like the out of bay Lancero. I do not like green eggs <laughs> and ham. <laughs> I don't like the, the You don't like the baby Jesus yeah, either. Yeah, the Pachisos and the, Lan and the Lancero well, of be... out of bay, Spiritus, they do not depict the brand flavor right of what Atabe is. Everything else there's I believe there's like fifteen sizes of Atabe. Am I in the in that ballpark? You're in the ballpark, yeah. Uh -huh. Fifteen sizes and there's, and there's two that don't belong because they just don't taste like the others. And I know every size doesn't taste alike and you should try different things and see what you know there's a there's a best size flavor wise or whatever. But they're all around the same with the exception of those two. And the other two do not sell all that well. Hachizos and 
Lancero. Well, you have a Lancero and a petite Lancero. That's the reason. Yeah. Huh. And so, uh, Dave, when I said you don't like the baby Jesus, I meant the Hachizos, not yes. the actual. I baby love the baby Jesus. Of course, I you love do. them. Do you I have a them. nativity scene at, I do. at home? I you do. do. Do you see the nativity scene somebody did with three peanuts, <laughs> shelled <laughs> peanuts, and they just take the little like you can see a shape of a peanut, right? Yeah. And they cut a little off the thing in the face, right? Where really? the face would be. And then they do a little one on the other one, and then they lay the other one on the side, yeah. and they cut the circle out in the thing, and it looks like the nativity scene, and somebody writes, my wife told me to make a nativity scene. Here you go. Now, for, <laughs> now to smoke a cigar or whatever. Uh, it's time to cut our cigar, and the official cutting is brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. How much longer are we going to wait? Perdomo's the brand, while all other brands were <laughs> raising prices. Janine Perdomo's birthday today, yesterday. Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellent. And they do stand for that. Big yeah. year with Perdomo. Big, big. Big. Some might say huge. 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 All right. So what did you do? You cut right through the cellophane? I did because... I always give you a cigar without cellophane so you don't do it. Be- well, because this, this has the... The hole punch is in the bottom, and I didn't want to tear the wrapper when I took it out. Yeah. That's hmm. a good call. He puts a hole in the cellophane. He doesn't he, do it anymore. No. Because he wanted the cedar and the wood thing to still mm. continue on. Then there became problems. As you pull it off, it cuts the, nick the wrapper. nicks the wrapper. So then he cuts it straight. And then the early days of not cutting it off. So you could actually look at the cellophane and determine. I certainly can. Mm-hmm. I know yes. which edition is which. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it turns out my spiritus is very well aged. This is fabulous. This is the cherryness, cordial cherry mm-hmm. on a cold draw. I love this cigar. It is my favorite cigar of all. I would go to Ritos probably, mm-hmm. size wise, because I want more. But what happens with the, with the small sizes, if they're thick enough, I love them so much that I want another. When I have a Ritos, I'm okay. I've finished, and I don't want another really you've got bad. Your, you've got your fill. But on this one, at the end of it, I'm going to want another one of these. And that's what you want as a cigar maker. You want people to want more, right? What we want to do is light our cigar, and we're going to do that with the Margaritaville Driftwood by Lotus. Wasted away This in is Margaritaville. S- <laughs> single action, a single jet, Easy adjustment wheel at the bottom, and it does have the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. Also, a fuel window right on the front in the shape of a margarita glass. How apropos. That is the Margaritaville Driftwood for fourteen ninety nine by Lotus. How come there's uh, no drinking on the show today? It's Christmas Day. Yeah, I was just going to ask, are you a fan of the eggnog? I like eggnog without booze in it. Yeah. In the cotton, you know. Yeah, full fat, none of this yeah. light eggnog. No, I like rum in mine. No shock to anybody listening to the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, I usually only have a little bit just to end up having it, because, but I could drink about a gallon. I love yeah. it. But I have a little taste. Taste. I don't put nutmeg in it or anything no, like no. that. I just right out of the hoods. The, cotton. the hoods, yeah. <clears throat> hoods. They don't have that everywhere, right? You don't I put don't that. Think so. You don't put nutmeg on it. You don't, I don't spice it up a little. No, a little cinnamon. It's delicious the way it is. <laughs> I w- believe me, if it was in there, I would not not have it. But uh, just like the straight nog. You ever try to make it no, yourself? No, I've done that. I know you have. I'm sure. It's gross. Are you, are you <laughs> eating at Christmas? Or no, you have a salad. <laughs> no, I'll eat the. I can have the meat and the sweet yeah. potatoes. Well, yeah. not the way you make them. The thing is, he can, he can just eat his Christmas wreath because he'll be done with it and it'll be the delicious. Wreath. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of holly. Yeah, 2022. You gonna be a man and be like regular people? No, <laughs> no. I'm sorry, but is it safe to assume that Michael Capellini likes a little bit of holly? <laughs> yes. Oh, <boy. laughs> oh my God. Is he? He's getting married on uh, New Year's Day. Yeah. Next week. Next, week. Next week he'll be married. Yeah. Perfect couple. Yeah. Yes. Perfect couple. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Uh, good. Cho- loving the cigar. Great choice. Um, what brand will be hot in 2022? 2022. 
it could come down to whoever's got cigars to sell. <laughs> Honestly and truly, I think that's what it's going to come down to. Uh, you're going to have the bigger players, probably mostly in Nicaragua, assuming that the things haven't gone completely south as far as the embargo and all that. I think you guys are wrong. I think the, bo the boom is over, and it's going to come to a crash for rest of the year. People are going to see it. Right on New Year's Day, or but now yeah, because Christmas is a lot of Christmas sales. Uh, Nobody knows it didn't happen. Mm. People got it. People are receiving their products. Um, manufacturers are going to be shipping out. Remember, prices are going up in January and things like that. And that is going to be the day we're a week away from the crash of 2022, or would you say the end of 2021? Whatever way you want to look at it, I think it's over for a few reasons. Um, economic crash of 2022. Recession that's going on, uh, people are going to realize how broke they are after Christmas, mm -hmm. and they're filling their home heating oil, especially those up in the in the um, in northeast. The north. <clears throat> um, it costs twice as much to fill your oil tank. Never mind your gas, all this stuff. You spent way too much money for Christmas, and here you are in a recession. What are you going to give up? You're going to either give up cigars, or you're going to go to more value cigar brands. Depending on the price increase, I got some, a, a watch list I, put, I created. Watch for growth, who's going to be hot in 2022. Watch Charter Oak. Mm. Yep. Charter Oak, as much as it's a monster right now, if you don't know it is, uh, it's going to get even bigger. Uh, yeah. We're talking about a great cigar for the money. As, as long he, as they can supply. He could go up an entire dollar on that Rothschild, and it wouldn't affect sales one yeah. bit. Perla Del Mar. Solid. Another one contender in the Cigar of the Year. We talked about its $7 price for the Toro. Great value. Classic. We do the classic mm -hmm. three-way. It's a low-price bundle cigar. Uh, it sells very, very well. Watch it. It's going to be a monster, I think. JFR. Yep. JFR yep. always been big in the brick-and-mortar stores um, and a big seller. Jonathan, good value. Jonathan likes those, right? Yeah, I smoke a fair amount. Yeah. Uh, La Galera. La Galera, always been a great value mm -hmm. cigar. I, I think that gets looked on, looked upon. Uh, what happens when the economy hits like this, and I've lived through it a few different times, not just the cigar boom that happened, but in the, um, in the 2000s, 2008, the economy dropped, and as a retailer paying attention, you'd watch your customer as a price increase would happen, or S-chip ended sure. up happening, major part of the growth of Perdomo. We talk about Go Perdomo lowered their price when everybody else raised their price. Holy shit. Made a big difference. Huge. Yeah. They tripled up in business of what ended up happening. Because the consumer, let's assume at that time people were looking for $5 cigars. Right? The $5 cigar now is a $10 cigar. But in those days, right. $5 cigar. All the $5 cigars went to $6. Right. And the five dollar customer looks at their five dollar cigar, and it went up to six dollars. And they go, "Wow, they went up to six dollars." Let me look around. They look around, they find a five dollar cigar, and all of a sudden, and, and this goes for every category. Everybody drops down. Right. The guy at the very top <clears throat> has a hard time because nobody's coming down to him. But everybody's dropping down, and then eventually those brands end up going up also. Because you, you'll see those ombre go way up, right? You've yes. got customers who will start buying it, and right. some of them never come back. Dos Ombre ends up it. being the catch-all for, you know, yeah. somebody gets priced out of a brand, and they go, they go to Dos Ombre. Yeah. So watch La Galera, and watch Perdomo Law 23 and Fresco. Mm. We always talk about Perdomo 10th anniversary, right. um, their, their uh, 20th, their top, top lines. Do not discard Law 23 and Fresco. Fresco is the bundle one. We only sell it by the bundle, yeah. And I forget about it often. And then somebody gives me one, right? Holy shit! What an unbelievable cigar that is. Yeah, for the I, money. I used to see people coming in and they'll buy four bundles at a time. Yeah, it, it's a wonderful cigar. It's not. It's it's a premium cigar in a bundle. Premium. It's, it is not a bundle cigar because you look at it as too expensive as yeah. a bundle cigar. It's a premium inside a bundle, and it's an unbelievable value premium cigar that's in the bundle. Uh, boutiques, uh, 
to watch, and then you should I just go through this whole thing, yeah. and then you guys add sure. on after. <clears throat> um, boutiques brands uh, might have a hard time boutique brands, and I'll tell you for a few different reasons. Um, the lack of money that they're going to end up having as the price goes up for this product and that the stores have too much product and the possibility of some people deep discounting their product because they ran out of cash. Mm -hmm. So we retailers end up buying, somebody comes to us in a deal and we take the deal and then this little boutique brand that we don't need, maybe the retailer runs out of money and I can't buy it. Out. Yeah, I can't buy it right now. I've, you know, used all my money out because I bought this closeout, basically. Sure. <clears throat> Saw that happen a lot. But watch for boutique brands that are up and comers. All Saint Cigars, I think, has a big future ahead. Mm -hmm. um, Bandolero that we're smoking. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a big year for them. It's a premium, premium cigar, but it's. It's going, to be the catch, from, it's going to be a catch-all from the bigger players. Yeah. Does an Atterby and Byron smoker say, I just can't do it? Right. And then they go to here because I just smoke Bandolero. I'm smoking Atterby. It's not quite Atterby, but it's but damn good. It's and good. for the price point. <clears throat> yeah. Phenomenal. Rojas. And I don't know a lot about Rojas, but that's a great cigar. It's, mm -hmm. it's a guy that's been around for a long time, but he's, he's kind of new in the manufacturing side. Yeah, he came over to the United States with <clears throat> not a pot to piss in. Uh, he now has his own factory. He's uh, curied his own, grown his own tobacco now. Um, he's taken all the steps to become a major player uh, down the line. But, Barry, you don't really need a pot to piss in because we have toilets. <laughs> I'm just saying. And if you're yeah. a dude, you just go outside. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It's fine. And it took him a long time because he wasn't comfortable speaking English. And now he's finally comfortable speaking it. We're going to start to see him out there more often. I haven't seen him once. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see if that happens. It will mm -hmm. certainly help. Um, and watch for the triumphant return. And you guys may disagree with me, but I think it's going to happen. Of La Flor Dominicana. Huh. There's only one way for them to go. So. Up or, well, there's two ways, up or out of business. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go with up. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, thing think, that they, the thing that they are doing is they are hitting the ground running with these events that are not your typical buy three, get one free. This is an experience event, yeah. and that's what consumers are looking to pay their money for. They put a candela out that we had on the show. Wow, was that good. Yeah. Man, they can make cigars. Yeah. They absolutely They got can. tobacco. And, and they, I, I don't know, I, I haven't heard yet, I want to hear at the end, were they up or down for the year? And it would seem that they're down because we're probably down with them because we didn't receive enough product. Mm -hmm. uh, but who knows? Who know, you know, but they also, sold every cigar they could make. The balance of that, yeah, they are selling out of their production, but they also had no sales staff this year. So Profit. The, that goes to your bottom line right there. Yeah. And I think the companies that are going to still be okay are the companies that have money behind them to be able to weather the storm. I don't think you're going to see Davidoff take a big, huge hit because they have other catch-all brands. So maybe yes. someone stops smoking White Label, they drop down to Avo. That, that's a possibility. Yeah. Padron, same thing. They have their own built-in catch-all. Yeah. It's the other companies like Aganorsa that doesn't really have a high, high-end cigar – they're playing in a different ballpark. All right, I want to hear what you guys say, but first let's take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. It's time for news from the insane asylum. <coughs> Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4 inches by 44 to the absolutely insane 8 inch by 80. Asylum Cigars. <laughs> <laughs> and you've heard a lot of Asylum stories over the years, but this one might be the nuttiest. MMA fighter Donovan Salvato spent 12 hours in the Metro Nashville jail on a domestic violence hold after he bit his roommate's testicles during an argument. Ouch. Police documented a two-and-a-half-inch laceration of the victim's scrotum, 
multiple bruises, and swelling to his head. Guess he liked it. Anyway, Donovan <laughs> Salvador, who is three and one as an MMA fighter, is now known as a real baller, and that's not only insane, it's asylum. Huh. Biting people. It's that's not like right. that's not in the rules. You no. can't bite. Yeah, there's no biting. There's no, no biting, there's shocking. no hair pulling. You can't tighten them. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> what do you mean? That is that is not a term that has been used in in, in conversation in, this in at least fifty years. They Fish hooking. To, they used to do it on an MMA. I used to go to the old MMAs, mm. the, the the UFC when it first started out, and they would grab the guy's face, put their thumbs in their mouth, and <laughs> rip their friggin' mouth, stretch their mouth out. They did it. And they grabbed their ponytails and stuff and ripped their hair, and it was all legal. And then they, those were the, like the first rules that came in. There's no fish hooking because they were doing it. No ripping the guy's hair out of his head. Because they or they held on to his hair, yeah, and then used it. Pound them, yeah. How yeah. about you just give yourself a whiffle because you're an MMA that, fighter, and that's what they did, but not at the beginning. Go back to the old old ones when men were men. So, Jonathan, you're all set. You might want to trim the beard, but there's nothing yeah, to grab up decide, top. If I decide I'm going in MMA, I'm clean shaven. Right? Is there a, an ultra lightweight category for Jonathan? He's there. Yeah. You can get in. I you? could probably I could probably get down to one seventy five and whoop some ass. <laughs> oh, you're over a hundred pounds. One eighty two, yeah. Yeah. He would dance around the ring. Yeah. Avoid gorgeous George. Remember the yeah. wrestler, gorgeous George. Gorgeous <laughs> John parading around. Yeah. He, he'd come in with a ballerina outfit and stuff. And <laughs> want to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> we can do something with that Upcoming shows Next week The Cigar of the Year We're going to announce oh. it Next week And We'll tell you about The Challenge Coin We have a Challenge there's Coin There's a coin? Going. There's a coin uh, there's, there's probably a story behind that There's a story that. behind <laughs> it And I will tell it The following week We're going to beat up The top 25 The other people's top 25 We're going to tell you What they are And beat it up In the January 15th The State of the Industry Address and we're going to announce the 2022 Firecracker. Whoa. And uh, we've got lots going on. We got it, uh, Actually, I'll even go as far as to say January 22nd, Steve Saka is going to come on. He's our guest. No way. And he's going to do a remake, a redo of a show that he said was not good. Huh. And he wants to redo that show. And it wasn't a show that he was on. He huh. listened to a show. He despised it so Wait much. Wait a minute. He says he never listens. Well, yeah, he listened. And he, he disliked he it so much. One time. He said, I would like to do a redo. When can you fit me in? This happened quite a while ago. And the redo was going to be on January 22nd. Uh, nice. And I'm off to TPE. Uh, and um, it's show after show. We got lots, lots going on in the Cigar Authority. So if you think we were going away, you're wrong. Merry Christmas. We're staying on. <laughs> um, all right. So who do you think uh, was hot in 2022 that I missed? Did, any 2022 coming up? Who's I, going to be the hot ones? I think you nailed them all. I think uh, whoever wins our cigar of the year is going to see a definite uptick. I mean, it's if you look historically who you've mentioned or we've named this cigar of the year, yeah. they've seen a bump, uh, not just here in New England, but nationally. So I can't think of anybody you love. Yeah, the, you missed one brand, the that new Zeno Nicaraguan that's priced in the right the right range yeah, that's that going to end be up being that could be hot that's going to end up being a thing yeah I, I think you nailed it with nick malillo because he took a different approach from a lot of the more recent entries that were all high-end premium so he didn't go the standard boutique route right he made well he's got his uh what are the they're not Charter flavored Oaks. oh um Infused. Infuse the uh, upsetters. Upsetters. Ups yeah. yeah, so he's got a whole product yes, line, and especially that Charter Oak, I think, will do well for him. I think so, too. All right, let's go way back. Let's go into 2025. So now, this is how a good business goes. You, you have a three-year plan, five-year plan, <laughs> 10-year plan. So this is three years from now. Who will be the biggest in 2025? And want me to go first again? Sure. You guys see sure. what I missed? Um, I have J.C. Newman. J.C. Newman now in control by 2025 of uh, J.C. Newman, Drew Newman. Uh, he will be the guy that will take this company to the next level. And it's happened each rendition of J.C. Newman that 
whatever they're thinking about. Each new generation you, seems to be a, a, the next level of innovator. And you can see things he's doing already. Right. So He, he was really driving the American, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, Perdomo. As much as I say, oh, my God, look, look what they've done. Nicholas III, um, he has his spin on things. He wants to do things. By 2025, I think he'll be allowed to do things. Um, he's the one that actually made the four cigars in the bag thing ah, with, with a yep. little, little pushback from his family saying, ah, we don't know about it. Boom, he's got a hit. I've had many a talk with him. And he's very bright. He, he tells me some of the things he wants to do. It hasn't so happened. As, as long <clears throat> as Nicaragua cooperates. Correct. Yes. Correct. But he's itching to, to get some, something, some of his ideas out there, and when he does, he's going to kill it. Um, William Ventura. William Ventura is a, a guy that used to uh, operate um, out of Davidoff. He went off on his own many, many years ago. Um, his sons are now in charge. I went and visited their factory, as small as it was. Um, they're going to be a bigger player. They have a brand called Adventura, which is uh, their own brand. Mm-hmm. They make a lot of cigars for a lot of boutique people. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got it going on. I'll tell you right now, um, we don't even carry anything from them, but I'm telling you, I there's have something a that's going to change. Yeah, yeah, there's somebody in the future. You know, you look at them, they're a shining star. Um, I smoked six different blends from them uh, in their office. All six were fabulous. You know, usually <laughs> this is the standout or whatever right. it is. Holy God, I mean, from all the different rapper styles and everything, huh. really good stuff. Uh, Tobacco Era El Artista, they're the people that bring us um, Big Poppy. Uh, they also make other great cigars, mm-hmm. and I think um, they're going to come into their own um, also. Um, uh, watch them. They're another watch to be the next big mm-hmm. thing. Dare I say it, and I am going to say it, it's wrong for me to oh say, boy. but I am. United Cigar. I just know behind the scenes, obviously, I know what's on. going on. Lots of stuff coming out. Lots of different plans. Um, they, there's a good five-year plan ahead for United Cigars. Don't count them out. They're, they're uh, very much in the mix here. Mm-hmm. Las Palmas, the Hochi Blanco. Been around a long, long time, but now his sons are involved. And again, we're looking at the next generation here we are looking at three years from now. Um, it's not going to be a slowdown. It's going to get better and better as it's going on. I could see it while I was down there. And the Aroas, Christian and Julio, both uh, uh, Christian and Husto, <clears throat> the father's getting older. They're coming uh, mm-hmm. um, amongst themselves anyway. Not that the father's going to go anywhere. Hopefully he lives a much longer life and everything's great. But um, they got big plans. There's, there's going to be more brands. There's going to be bigger plans. Their growth. I talked to Christian actually yesterday on the hmm. phone. What do you think? What do you think? What do you, you know, when they care enough to go around and start making calls, and yeah. you, can, you can see that they're planning for the future. And they're still excited about yes. it. Yes. Yes. So the, that's what I have the, for, for three years from now. It's going to boil down to the companies that have been uh, fiscally responsible and that can weather the storm that's coming. So I do believe 2022 is going to be a slowdown. So can uh, are they a big enough company that they can weather right. that and they have enough in the reserve mm-hmm. tank to be able to weather it and move on? And I think we're going to see companies that are not known for lower-priced cigars come out with lower-priced cigars because they're going to have to. Yeah. See, I think if, if All Saints can weather it, he's just consistently putting out very good cigars. Yeah. So if he can keep that rolling by 2025, the, it could the, be looking good. The the huge question mark on, on this is 2025 is where do we stand with FDA by then? Right. So yeah, you mentioned J.C. Newman, you mentioned Bedomo. They're going to be fine. But I worry about the future for some of the brands that aren't predicated yeah. Mm. Where will they stand in three years? In three years from now, it could be a totally different industry. It is going to be a totally different industry anyway because it always goes through these cycles. You notice I didn't mention a lot of the hot boutiques mm-hmm. now, three years from now, mm-hmm. because they won't be the hot new boutique anymore. Mm. I went to some older ones. 
FDA is, is, is a big reason for it also, um, how much money these companies have. They used to look at the retailer and see how much credit they're going to give them based on that. Well, I don't need a problem with credit right now. I, I actually look at the manufacturer to see how much money they have <laughs> right. to see if they're going to be able to weather the storm. Because it's the same amount to- of effort to push brand X that is new versus brand Y that's old. It's yeah. the same amount of effort. In the end, you need to be able to get a return on your investment. You're going to spend a million dollars at a trade show. That money's got to be able yeah. to come back. I always like helping the underdog and the little guy and the small company up there as opposed to give the money to the big successful giant mm-hmm. or whatever. But that is the thing that's rolling out at the, sa- at the same time. What do you got? I know one you missed. McAuliffe. Mm. Plenty of money behind them. They've got their own factory. It's been a sandbox for a billionaire for the last couple of years. Yeah. And I think they left our meeting this year and uh, went back and did some retooling. We'll see. Only, t- only time I, I, only time's going to tell when it comes to that. I did not see them at the trade show. They weren't there. <laughs> that, that's a bad sign. Um, if they're looking for growth and things like that, I know it costs a lot of money to be <laughs> at the trade show. They need to be there. Uh, they, got, they got to at least do TPE. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see what their their play is when it comes to that. I'm looking at uh, what I have here, Barry, and uh, I'm giggling right now yeah. because I don't think we can do this. We, we, <laughs> could, we could do it. We could do a little impromptu poll between the four of us. All right. So uh, well, I came so- prepared. I sorted in the notes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the question of the week brought to you by Victor Sinclair Cigars. Victor Sinclair Cigars. The cigars you won't question. And we don't have a user poll this week, but thank God it'll be 325 days until we start hearing Christmas music again. (laughs) But is there one Christmas song that's on the top of your list that you wouldn't mind hearing on a regular basis? Dominic the Donkey, I smile when I hear it. Oh, God. It makes me smile. It makes me smile for sure, Uh, as does the other... um, Chipmunks, uh, <laughs> one. These are just funny smile. Remind me when I was a kid, uh, Christmas songs. But more, more, um, you know, goofy. I told Sarah when she moved up here, she uh, about the chipmunks all over the place. Yeah. And she goes, "Oh my God, they're so cute." I go, "Come December first, you're gonna hate them sitting outside your window singing Christmas songs." <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, it's Bing Crosby and David Bowie's "Little Drummer Boy." Oh my God. They did that in one take. Classic. Yeah. Do you ever see David Bowie and Mick Jagger doing uh, Dancing in the Street? Uh, horrendous. Video? Mm-hmm. Horrendous. Yep. Mr. Jonathan, you ever it's, see it? Yes. It, it's so bad that <laughs> it's, it's actually worst. good. <laughs> it's that bad. It's so bad. It right. is. Here's my Christmas selection, Barry. Mm-hmm. Christmas in Hollis. Run, Run, Run DMC. DMC. <laughs> Solid choice in Sullivan. Like that. I mean, I don't mind the John Lennon thing. Happy Xmas, the war is yeah. over. Yeah, okay. And uh, just to be in my same Summers B vein uh, as, I, as I like to be <laughs> oh, in, no. uh, I'm a huge Sarah McLaughlin fan, and she did a song with the Bare Naked Ladies, mm-hmm. and it's called We Three Kings. It's the classic Phenomenal. song, but they do this in the round vocal at the mm. end that is just breathtaking. So but We Three Kings by Sarah it, McLaughlin. I agree. It's top three for me. Gender correct? Shouldn't it be queens? I like they're know. singing that they're kings. Is that okay? I think you can be a king if you're a girl. I think it's okay now. It's All right. right. I'm just Almost happy. 2022. <laughs> I don't have to hear that bitch Mariah Carey tell Whoa. me that I'm all she wants for Christmas. You don't like it? You're not. Uh, She's I been can't. lying to no. you for oh. years. <laughs> can't do it? What do you guys think of the cigars you're smoking? Would I make a mistake not... Uh, Demanding I get that Lancero? You wouldn't have been happy with it, but I'm thrilled with it. I think this is the best thing Barry's ever done. (laughs) (laughs) And I mean of all time. (laughs) This is this is a perfect cigar. We're collectively smoking four hundred points on the rating scale. God bless us, everyone. I love Adabe. I don't care what anybody says. I loved it the first time I ever smoked it, and here it is 10 years later, 10 years ago that was, huh. and I said, oh my God, at a trade show in Las Vegas to say, 
a cigar was the most unbelievable cigar I ever smoked. And here it is 10 years mm-hmm. later. I'm smoking it again. It's all and, you talked about when you came back from that trade show. It's all you talked and about. And here it is all this time. Not a bit of disappointment has ever happened to me with this brand. Do you, do you think there should be a 10th anniversary one? Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Well, there was a Maduro version of this. Oh, yeah. I, I have one. You have one? Yeah, I do. 10th and anniversary Calibra. <laughs> yeah. oh, God. No more sizes of it, but to do a Maduro version of it would be interesting. It would. And, and when we made that NFT, Nelson says, wow, that's interesting. I'm going to play around with that, huh. meaning not play around digitally. Yeah. He's going to actually do so. And I said, I would love to be in on this and, and try the samples as it goes on. I have never, ever sampled anything in advance of anything he's ever huh. come out with. It just shows up. As did the Hachizos right. and the, and the you had spiritus. no idea spiritus. about the size. At the they same time, he, he said, here it is. And I'm like, oh, oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, I have a surprise for you. And it was those two. And I said, oh, no. Yeah, not all surprises are good ones. No, no. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, I don't think we can really do the best email of the week, but we have some of the best emails of all time. We may not. I'm going to talk to you in the, on the break. We may be calling an audible. I have an idea. Okay. We're live in the Toscano Cigar Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Drew Estate is about to make someone a whole lot richer. During its latest freestyle live show on the company's Facebook Live page, facebook.com forward slash Drew Estate Cigar, Drew Estate announced that it will be holding a Bitcoin sweepstakes with numerous incredible prizes during upcoming freestyle live events, including a grand prize of one full Bitcoin for a lucky fan to be announced during the February 17th, 2022 edition of Freestyle Live. During each of the company's three upcoming Freestyle Live events, October 15th and November 11th in 2021 and January 20th of 2022, the company will randomly select the names of five people who attend the online show and comment during specific times in each broadcast as potential winners of an assortment of fantastic prizes. The five winners from each of these three shows will create the contestant pool of 15 people eligible to win that grand prize, Bitcoin. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Anduyo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. Experience the rich tradition of the legendary H. Upman brand with the latest addition to their iconic 1844 line. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo uses a rich, well-balanced blend of Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Dominican tobaccos and an extra-aged wrapper that offers a deep aroma with a bold finish. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo is sure to please adult smokers looking for a delicious, handmade, premium smoke that is aged to perfection. Certain general warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. 
Hey, nobody's going to take away your donuts. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more. It's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Hi, this is Nestor Miranda from Miami Cigar, and you are listening to the Cigar Authority. We're back, and we're smoking Barry's favorites, 400 rated hey, up here. Dave, that was Nestor Miranda. Do you think he shot any reindeer? Yes, <laughs> probably. <laughs> he shoots everything, right? And he was willing to give me one of the heads to... to Bring for the house. <laughs> My wife was so appalled by it. Don't you dare bring that in the house. I'm like, are you kidding me? It'll be something cool. No. Put it in the den and I could be like a man and <laughs> like a man. Get, like a man. Man adjacent. Yeah. Uh loving it. Atabay, the best. The best. Uh and I'm you are you're doing the, the This um, is the Venetianos. The twentieth anniversary. Yes, 20th century. Uh, 20th century, which is my favorite of the three centuries. 19th century, a little kind of full-bodied. 20th century, more medium. And the 21st century, a little lighter. Um, Except for the disquintitos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so... Uh, so we called an audible in, yeah, on, the, on the break. I had two stacks. I have <coughs> the emails that I think are the best emails that we've ever mm-hmm. gotten. There's we'll, a few we'll, of those. We'll do that on the after show. That'll be the after show. And these are emails that did not make the cut. Now, that doesn't mean that they're bad emails. That just means there were three emails that I thought were better for that week. Okay. So some of these, some of these could be pretty good. Okay. But the, there's not, no prize. Not award. eligible for a prize. There's, yeah, there's no prize this week, but uh, uh, I'm just going to take a guess Why and can't say, there be a prize? We uh, don't know what the prize we is. We don't know what the prize is. <laughs> so what? We'll know what the day it ends up uh, happening. A mystery prize? Oh, you can't show it? Yeah. But we'll say it twice on the other show or something. It, it's going to be the same prize it was on last week's show. Um, okay. Let me do the math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be the same prize that was on last week's show. Same prize right, as last okay. week's show. So to the folks at Altadas, uh, whatever brand it was uh, last week, whatever last it week. is. Yeah. So it's important if you win this email of the week, make sure you email us. Well, I'll give you when the, you win. I'll, I'll have you the sheet. But she- we're talking a month from now. And- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Merry Christmas. We have to give a gift I know, on it's Christmas. Christmas. Day. We have to. So it they felt, understand. felt kind of screwed. We just can't show what it is. But yeah. it's our friends at Altada Cigars, and it's it's probably H. Upman or Monte Cristo oh, or Romeo and Juliet. Juliet. So we said all three. We, could, we got covered, right? Come on. The following Christmas. message was submitted mm-hmm. through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. And Josh writes, fellas, love the show. I look forward to listening to it and the after show every week. It makes my commute a little more tolerable. Hmm. The show on smoking in the car was incredibly helpful. Keep up the good work. Mr. J, I recently watched the show on YouTube for the first time. Why do your wrists go all the way up your arms to your shoulders? Put some meat on to <laughs> back up all that talk. Maybe Whoa. you won't take so much shit. Ah. Love the show. Stick what? arms. Mm. Yeah, I can't see why that didn't make the cut because I like it. <laughs> for, for an athletic guy, you're not muscular. You're more lean than you are muscular. I can lift heavy things. Kind, yes, kind of strong, kind of feminine. Following message was submitted through the contact us page of the cigarauthority.com. Jonathan is my savior, is the subject line. Oh my God, are uh, these all about you? And it's Christmas time. So In no particular savior. order. It's, pr- it's perfect. Uh, I'm going to get straight to the point here. After watching last week's episode during the Versus segment, I was hit with an epiphany. I've always seen Jonathan, much like myself, an overopinionated, androgynous douchebag. <laughs> Until I heard him speak those beautiful words that pineapple and jalapenos are the ultimate pizza combination. I heard angels sing. I felt understood for the first time in my life. I'd always been ashamed of this devilish craving, but no more. Jonathan made me feel heard. And I saw him in a different light as well. 
Maybe he's just a little misunderstood too. So for those of you who come here solely to mock his behavior, shame. Give him a chance, just like you should give pineapple and jalapeno a chance. We are superior. Shame. God bless Jonathan. Shame. Good day. Shame. Now, I don't think... Have you ever had it? I don't think Jonathan agreeing with you <coughs> validates your opinion. It's, it's just a reason to be more ashamed. I, have you ever had it? No, I wouldn't eat that. So yeah. I normally wouldn't, but I was hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and he was eating it every day. This was a long time. Yeah, you was. didn't scrape all the shit off, though, did so you? So he said, just try it. And I got to say. You was, liked it? I loved it. No way. I it's, never ordered it. Yeah. Never paid for it. Mm-hmm. But he had it, I ate it, and I ate it m- multiple times, not just that day, but other Well, because times if I'm ordering pizza for lunch, I'll order some extra. But yeah. I'm not getting plain cheese to give him the out. You right. want to eat pizza with me, this is what I'm ordering. I was yeah. surprised. I'd rather have Reese's peanut butter cups than eat that combination. No. Be- because you haven't had it. So it's like voting for Cigar of the Year and you didn't have every I've single I've had cigar pineapple on pizza. I, but I, you didn't have it with jalapeno. Yeah, no, but the jalapeno is a game changer. Game changer. I, I can never sell it in my face in Brooklyn if I eat pineapple on pizza on a regular. Nobody from Brooklyn is going to be watching you eat the friggin' pizza. <laughs> I wasn't even a jalapeno person right. until I ate it. Now I have jalapenos on burgers all the time. Uh, I love the jalapeno. Oh. Speaking of which, I forgot your mac and cheese in my fridge. <laughs> I have it. Made your mac and cheese, buddy. Really? For Merry Christmas? Christmas? Look at what a guy. Mm-hmm. Following well, messages. And he's so- not even going to return. He's going to hand it to me here, and he's not exactly. welcome back I, in the house. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to let I'm him I'm unvaccinated in. swine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com, and I'm going to tell you this is the winner because it's the perfect email. According to you. For today. All right. Gentlemen, after last week's show, when Dave seemed to be blindsided and taken aback by comments made by your guest, I had an idea. Why not do a Festivus show? Mr. J can bring in his aluminum pole. You could have feats of strength segments, and the show could be focused on the airing of grievances. At least that way, Dave will know what's coming and won't look like he wants to climb under the desk. Keep up the good work. Nate. What was the show? I don't remember. (laughs) September 7th. Is when I got the email. <clears throat> so it would have been the show before that. Jonathan is my savior. Jalapeno. Really? You're picking that over the Festivus one at Christmas? Somebody else wrote into a Festivus one before. All right. But Maybe that's, that's why right. I didn't pick this. There, were, there was two Festivus ones. It was two Festivus. It wasn't original. Hmm. It might have come in at the same time or whatever. I don't know. But because of that, I can't do it. Barry, what do you got? I'm going with the first one, but I'm looking up to see who the September 7th would have been referring All to. All right, so we have one for each, first, second, and third. Once again, so Ed it Sullivan. is Ed Sullivan. It's his is call. Is Jonathan your savior? Are you a fan of jalapenos and pineapple on a pizza, or are you a fan of Festivus? Or his arms. Um, Remember the guy with the, with the he's got little arms, oh, the, stick yeah. arms. That's, hey, stick I arms is number one. Gotcha, I had him out over Your yeah, savior yeah. is number two. And... Um, the last one of Festivus. I, I'll give it to number two because nobody's ever agreed with Jonathan before. Jonathan is your savior. All right. Jalapenos on a pizza. As it should go that he used savior <laughs> and Jesus is our savior. Oh, nice. So the, the person was referring to the episode that Vil, Phil Zangi was on and should I break up on my cigar shop? Ah. Hmm. Okay. Just to know what that is. Okay, the after show, we're going to have the best emails of all time. Wow. According to Mr. Jonathan. Yeah. He's gathered them up. Of So far, of all the years we've been getting emails, he's picked the best ones ever. And we're going to show you what those are on there. But right now, it's time to ask the Don. It is time to ask the Don. Brought to you by Don Rafael Cigars. Don Rafael Cigars are premium cigars. They're mellow and smooth. Premium. <laughs> built for every man's everyday Enjoyment, Don Rafael Cigars. And uh, this is with respect to rapper splitting. Hey, got. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm not going to shit on anybody here. Damn, I won't win the prize. I need help figuring out why so many of my cigars blow up the wrapper when I take the band off. I take the band off very carefully once the burn reaches the band. No wrapper damage that I can see. And then I set it in the ashtray, and a minute later, the band cracks and the whole thing falls apart. The latest was on a very good quality cigar. What am I doing wrong? The humidor is at about 68%, and I'm smoking in a pretty dry climate. What am I doing wrong? And I'm going to say, 
that 68% believe it or not is a touch high <coughs> and that could be the issue especially no. it's no, if it's in a dry climate you would want it to be a touch higher no you don't mm -hmm. here's what's happening you guys can argue with me if you want the you're wrong. Cigar on the the inside of the cigar is 68%. He, the he's outside, a, he's actually right. The outside dries out, so when the heat hits that combustible material, it expands and goes through the dried out wrapper. If you started with a drier cigar on the inside, is he taking the cellophane off the cigars before he puts them in the humidor? Well, that doesn't say. That's I, mistake number one. If you if are, he, if he is. That's causing the outside leaf to be drier than the inside yeah. leaf. You want to keep them together. Keep I'd them guess together. it's probably a Connecticut, too, that's more prone we to have, We'd have to have lot, lots of questions to ask you mm. to get the answer. But I, I get where you're going. But I hold mine at 62% all year long at home. I have never had a cracked wrapper. Ever? Not since I've been doing it at 62. Huh. Okay. We don't have an exact answer for you, but we need more. Little, little more than there. But, uh, okay, we're running out of time. Let's get to the Classic 3-Way, and it's brought to you by Classic Cigars. It's time for This Day in Classic History, brought to you by Classic Cigars. Classic Cigars are now the most affordable cigar brand in America. With prices as low as $1.50, this cigar has something for everyone. The Classic Connecticut is light and smooth. The Classic Maduro is bold, but never overpowering. The classic Cameroon sits somewhere in between with hints of sweetness. And the classic Cuban is a real knockoff of the taste and flavors from old-time Havanas. Classic cigars are sold in cost-saving bundles of 20 and sold in five great sizes, ranging from $1.50 to $2.25 per cigar, which makes classic the most affordable premium handmade cigar in America. Classic Cigars. I have three questions and three tiebreakers, and we have well, no idea who our champion is. Yeah, best guess would be me. Yeah, best let's guess. let Ed Sullivan go first. Do the best guess. Richard Starsky. Starsky and Hutch? Better known as Ringo, Ringo. Starr. Received his first drum set on Christmas oh, Day. Oh, Christ. <laughs> what year was that? He Richard, that's what he got for Christmas. All right. Ringo Starr got as a gift for Christmas today, but what year was that? Uh, that was in 1944. 44. As God is my witness, 1944 is the answer I have written down. 44. I have 36. 36. 44 will win. It was actually 57. Oh, he 57. got it later in life. He did. So 44 gets a point for Mr. J and Ed. Barry gets nothing. Huh. I'm gonna write that down. Barry he gets, gets nothing. But of course, to you, Mr. Jonathan. Christmas. And it's, apropos, what is what does that word mean? Appropriate. How how appropriate is this? <laughs> Jimmy Buffett, Ooh. country singer songwriter, got a lighter. He does. Uh, Caribbean inspired songs of islands. Uh, devoted fans of the Parrot Heads, best known for his hit Margaritaville. Got a lighter called Margaritaville. Was born today. Born Jimmy today. Buffett. Uh, 1941. 41. I have 43. 43. I also had 43. 43. Two points, one for each year. Uh, 46 was the answer. So we have one point for Ed, one point no, for... No, I have two. You have two, <coughs> but you get one point. And yeah. Me and Jonathan have one each. Two, one, one. It's three questions, three tiebreakers. Oh, three tiebreakers. We had a lot in case we had yeah. to kill some time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And it is over, last question, Barry, over me. to Barry. Annie Lennox, pop singer, Sweet Dreams Are Made of These from the Arrhythmics, Walking on Broken Glass in a solo career. She was born today. Nin Annie Lennox. 1960. 60. Nine. Ed Sullivan. 1962. 1954. 54. She looks great for her age. Two points for Mr. Jonathan, the winner. And we got to remember that fuck? Mr. Jonathan goes first on the last episode of the year. Oh, boy. Mr. Jonathan goes first That's on the last That's when he studies, right? This is his, his game. Yeah. This is big for him, the last, because then he considers himself the winner of the year. Right. And he's big on that. So uh, He's the only one who's big on that, right? Yeah, but it's, yeah. A, it's his thing. All right. So he's got a thing. He's lucky to have a thing. <laughs> I got a thing. It's out of base cigars, and I love all the manufacturers we deal with, and we have... Cigar winners of all time, 
Best Cigar of the Year, which we're going to announce next week. But if there was a best cigar ever, it's Atabe. Best cigar ever. Of all time. For me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I was stuck on a desert island and I only had one brand to smoke the eternity on said desert island, it would be out of it. You know what's good about these? I don't smoke them very often. And every time I, I light it up, it's like, holy shit, man, is this the best cigar? Right. Because if I did it all the time, I'd it, probably lose appreciation yeah. for it. See, if I need the desert island, I, I got to go with Jonathan's, the Byron. I need a little more oomph. And would it, would it be the 20th century, or would you go to the 19th century? I don't know. What century should I go to, Jonathan? You should go dis- Distinguidos. All right. It's I'll the, go with uh, what Jonathan century. says. Yeah. Great to go. Everybody's liking it. Mm-hmm. Would, would you have any argument of 100 rated for any of these cigars? I probably wouldn't go 100 on the Spiritus. Yeah. I mean, it's very good, yeah. but it doesn't quite get to 100 would for you, me. Would, would it be the best Lancero? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. That's it. All Merry right. Christmas, everybody. This is everybody. the happiest Christmas ever it with is. these cigars. It is. It's great. It's great. Uh, next week, we will announce the Cigar of the Year. The Cigar of the Year. It's the first one. It came out in 1992. We continue it to do it year after year. Despite people not including us in it, it's okay. We're not included. It is the Cigar of the Year. Who will it be? We're going to get to that. Were we right? Were we wrong? We're going to let you decide on that. Tune in and find out next week on the Cigar Authority. Until then, Merry Christmas, and we'll catch you on New Year's Day on the Cigar Authority. And uh, it's quite possible that you learned something today, which makes you the Cigar Authority. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.